Well, hello and how are you? Hey, it's me again, Shenandoah Briscoe, coming to you live right here in St. Charles, Missouri. Yes, sir, home of the ice sculpture competition. That's right, this uh, Saturday, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, um, January 30th, down on North Main Street in the 100 block. There's going to be about two blocks of uh, ice sculpture uh carvers and they're going to be making some beautiful beautiful artwork so come on over to st charles and take a look see um let's see i guess the uh event will start around uh oh let's see what time does it start why it doesn't even say what time it starts so anyway come on over and take a look see and enjoy it Saturday, January 30th, 2016. Speaking of 2016, this is going to be blog number 245. That's right, 245. Now, I'm not going to um, pressure you into having to sit and listen to me read because, well, hey, I tried it. It didn't work out real, real well. So, uh, what I am going to do, though, is I am going to tell you where to locate that story so that you can read the rest of it on your own because it is an exciting tale, and it's slowly, uh, it slowly uh, gets more and more adventurous. It's a creeper. All right, hold on just a second. Let me uh, pull that up, and I'll... And I'll show you where uh, to find that. If you just go to Google. And then you go to 20 Great American Short Stories. Well, actually, AmericanLiterature.com. And then you go down to, like, the third thingy. And it will be to build a fire. In 1908 by Jack London. A classic man versus nature story set in the Yukon Territory in northwestern Canada. The dog did not did not know anything about thermo, uh, thermometers, but it had a sense to know that it was no time for traveling. So there you go. That is called To Build a Fire by Jack London. So go on over there to AmericanLiterature.com and slash 20 great American short stories. And that's 20 hyphen great hyphen American hyphen short hyphen stories. And enjoy yourself. Read away because well hey there's some pretty good ones in there. Uh, there's the monkey paw Monkey's Paw, which I remember, uh, I don't know if you all remember that one, but anyway, it's all about this uh, guy that, uh, this kid had died, and his, um, this, I don't know which lady said that she could bring him back to life. All they had to do was have a monkey's paw or something. Anyway, it would bring their child back to life after uh, a certain length of time. Well, the problem was, that when he came back to life, he was all uh, decomposed and stuff. So, ick. And then there's the cask of uh, uh, a Montatillo, which is an Edgar Allan Poe. So, all these things are uh, pretty good, you know? I mean, that just, just because uh, the one that I was reading didn't turn out to be too too good doesn't mean that the rest of them aren't too good uh the little match girl uh 1905 by christian anderson hans christian anderson by the way but any of those will do great so hey just jump on over there to the american literature 20 great stories.com no american literature.com 20 great stories Okie dokie. Hey, that being said, uh, what was I going to say today? 
Well, I know I'm kind of lightheaded. Do I look pale? One of the reasons I look pale is because of the lighting in here is a little different than normal. And the reason that is is because the sun is shining bright through my uh, back door, which is over my left-hand shoulder. And, well, I couldn't have both the uh, um, overhead light and the uh, um, sunlight shining both at the same time. It made it way too bright in here. So that's what happened there. Anyway, um, I mean, I like to read, and I like to read uh, stories that I've read before because, well, I, you know, I used to read for my kids, but whenever I read for my kids, I would ad lib. So all the stories that I read at night for them, I just looked at the pictures and made up, you know, what I remembered from when I was a kid, so it was not necessarily the exact story. Uh, so I was a storyteller per se, not n not a story reader. Let's put it that way. Which you know, speaking as a stories to tell. Uh, there was a time. There was a time when my death was highly over-exaggerated. No, that's somebody else's story. That would be Samuel Clemens, Mark Twain, out there from Hannibal. Actually, you know, he was actually born in Paris. Of course, that's Paris, Missouri. And then, you know, it was... Uh, closest big city to Paris, Missouri is uh, Hannibal. So Hannibal got all the credit. And of course Mark Twain was written I mean uh, Tom Sawyer was written all about from Hannibal Mo. So there you go. Yeah. Do you remember that movie? Tom Sawyer? first time I ever saw it was uh, that little kid that played Jody on um, A Family Affair. Yeah, or Family Affair, not A Family Affair. But Family Affair, there was a little red-headed, curly top kid named Jody. And uh, he actually played uh, Tom Sawyer. And, uh, well, that was the first time I ever saw it. As a matter of fact, I'll... Uh, Check out who that kid was for you. Hold on just a second. I'm going to Google it up. Wake up. Who played Jody on Family Affair? Johnny Whitaker. There you go. Scratch that. Scratch that. Go to sleep. Ugh. Yeah, Jonathan Whitaker. Anyway, yeah, that's who it was. So, anyway, that actually that was in uh, Wake Up. What year did Jonathan Whitaker play Tom Sawyer? Go to sleep. Yeah, 
Yeah, there you go. 1973. 1973. Tom Sawyer and his pal Huckleberry Finn have great adventures on the Mississippi River, pretending to be pirates, attending their own funeral, and witnessing a murder. Director Don Taylor. Writers were Mark Twain's novel, Robert B. Sherman. Screenplay, uh, and one more credit. Doop, doop, doop. The stars were Johnny Whitaker, uh, Celeste Holmes, Warren Oates, and you can see the full cast and crew by jumping on to imbd.com. So there you go. That'll give you your information. But yeah, that's the first Tom Sawyer I'd ever seen. So that was 1973. Way back in 73. Oh, I remember it well. But that was the one I enjoyed. So hey, there you go. I'm a big fan of Google. I Google up everything. Now you notice that the sunlight's moving on on me now I'm getting dark let me see if I can't remedy that give me a second whoa that ain't gonna work hold on No, nope, that ain't working either. Well, we'll try that for now. It's not very good, though. It was better off where it was a while ago, but can't seem to get it back there so go figure here maybe I'll try this video brightness default Boink. hold on I got a phone call coming in Give me a second, I'm going to pause out on you. Sorry about that, but there was my brother uh, speaking to me. So anyway, yeah, boy, I tell you what, this coloring coloring situation is even worse now because the sun went like bye-bye when it did. Well, you know how that goes. Anyway... My picture was better earlier, but it's getting worse and worse. My contrast is off. And, well, we'll get better tomorrow whenever we get that light back on over my head. But anyway, that being said, hey, who cares? Got to sneeze. It's coming, but I ain't going to do it yet. I'll do it later. Of course, when I was first injured, uh, they had stuck one of them, uh, uh, when I went in for my surgery, they had to put one of these uh, hoses up my nose so that I could, uh, um, I don't know what it was for, maybe it was, uh, wasn't a feeding tube or something up there, I don't remember what it was for anyway. The thing that they shoved up in my nose was about the size of a raptor claw. You ever seen uh, Jurassic Park? Remember that big old raptor claw that he had in his pocket? Well, that's what they shoved up in my nose. And anyway, it left a cavity up in there that was probably huge. But I used to be able to stick a 6-inch Q-tip about um, 4 inches up my nose. So... That being said, that was pretty high up in there. 
But anyway, I used to tickle my nose, make myself sneeze. And the little kids would get just the biggest laugh over that on account. I'd wind up and wind up for the biggest sneeze you ever heard. And then all of a sudden it'd be like a... That'd be about it. Anyway, hey, um, that's my time. So, goodbye, my friends. It's time to go. Yes, goodbye, my friends. It's time to go. I hate to leave you, but I really must go. Goodbye, my friends. Goodbye. Hey, this here Shenandoah Briscoe saying hello and how are you? You know, God loves you and so do I. So be blessed in Jesus' name and come back and see me tomorrow because, well, I'll be here and I hope you are too.